My name is Duke Robillard, actually Michael Robillard, but I go by Duke and I have for the last 45 or 50 years as I've been a blues man for all that time. I look at blues music as being music that has, uh, besides just the forms of blues that are looked at these days as the blues, Chicago blues, Louisiana blues, or whatever, LA blues, Texas blues, uh, old country blues, Delta blues, but the blues really had a big effect on American music in general from the 1920s through the 1950s, you know, uh, and uh, or further, but uh, blues and jazz have a lot of interconnection in the old days. Not so much today, but in the the 20s, 30s, and 40s, especially. Um, really, rhythm and blues grew grew out of the original rhythm and blues. Jump blues grew out of a combination of blues and jazz musicians playing blues. So uh, I, I look at blues as a very wide spectrum of music. Big band music uh, has been a big influence. A lot of blues has been played in you know, big band music and uh, jazz and uh, country music. Uh, country music, Hank Williams to me is blues. Uh, there's a giant uh, impact that blues music made on on other kinds of music in the 1920s the Appalachian uh, you know kind of backwoods music you know was influenced by blues very much kind of a uh, melding of blues and old folk songs from from uh, England and Ireland and you know the blues is just infiltrated every part of American music in in the old days you know that's kind of gone in new music today but it's very important to be noted that it is such a big part of American music not just the form of blues but the influence it had everywhere Spend my money on some other guy. My dog won't leave me with a load of bills. She won't get drunk and she won't take no pills. Five men dog. I was about 10, uh, and that was about 1958. Um, the flip side of Maybelline by Chuck Berry was a song called uh, In the Wee Wee Hours. And that was the very first blues song I heard. And I was, I was young, but it just took me over. It was a slow blues and very laid back. But the mood of that song just captivated me. And I started looking for more of that music. You know, I didn't know that it was blues. I didn't know the name of it. Where I grew up, the, it wasn't in a city. There was none of that music around being played. But I heard it, and I was just devastated by it. I just, I, this is the greatest thing I've ever heard. So much feeling. And at 10 years old, I felt that, you know. So it's great. It's just what great music does to you, you know. It just... Gives you goosebumps and, you know, takes over. Well, my, my parents, when I was in high school, a junior in high school, we moved to a slightly bigger city. I wouldn't even call it a city, a town, in the same state in Rhode Island. And uh, three or four years after that, 
I moved to Providence, Rhode Island, which is an actual city. It's the capital of Rhode Island. And I started playing in a blues band there. And uh, very soon after that, I started Roomful of Blues. And uh, yes, and in, in 67, I started the band, which we were concentrating on the blues, the only, the only blues that I heard at that time, which was a lot of it was from Chicago. Elmore James and Buddy Guy and um, uh, Muddy Waters, Holland Wolf, that kind of little Walter. And, but soon, soon after that, I started collecting 78s, finding them in uh, antique stores and stuff. And I discovered rhythm and blues with the horns. And that made me want to have a band with horns and do that old original rhythm and blues from the 40s. And that's what was really the inspiration for the original Roomful of Blues.